Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It is Drew here from Lone Fox, and today I have a new DIY video for you. This one is going to be Urban Outfitters inspired, and I have just been on an Urban Outfitters kick lately. Like, there is something about their home section that is so amazing. Like, I love their pieces. They have such a variety of pieces for so many different people's styles and homes. So I wanted to recreate a couple of things that I saw on their website um, at a more affordable price point, but alter them a little bit to make them our very own customized pieces. So we're not copying 100%, you know. So today we are going to be creating a couple of Urban Outfitters inspired DIY projects. And if you're not familiar with my channel, I post brand new DIY and home decor content every single week. And I also post more behind the scenes type stuff over on my Instagram account, which is Lone Fox Home. I'll put it on the screen for you, but don't forget to subscribe to this channel for new videos every week because they're pretty good and pretty fresh and pretty fun so I don't have that much more to say I mean I think we should start DIYing don't you think I think so I kind of wore an Urban Outfitters inspired look today like a little vintage a little retro a little bit like homepage you know I'm really excited to share them with you guys and I think this no I'm not gonna say I say every single video that this might be my favorite one it's just another good one you're gonna like it so let's get started For this first project, I'm starting off with some macrame cording and I'm going to be cutting a total of six strands of cording and I'm gonna cut them to about eight feet each. So I'm gonna have six eight foot strands, um, but actually when I go to macrame, I'm going to be folding it in half. So I'm gonna have a total of 12 four foot strands. Sorry, the math is a little challenging there. But what I'm starting off by doing is just folding them all in half as shown here and I'm gonna grab another small piece of cording and this is just gonna be creating a finished top loop. This is gonna be where you're gonna hang it on your wall, the shelf, and it's just gonna look very finished and polished. So I'm wrapping it around all 12 strands and then just tying a knot at the end to make this sort of coiled up end cap, I guess you could say. And I'm sectioning it off into three equal four strand sections. And this is the knot that we're gonna be creating. You're going to use the left strands, go over the center, the right are gonna go over the top of the left, under the center, and through the back of the left side, if that makes sense. You kind of have to just watch what I'm doing. It's a little hard to explain because there's so much right and left and middle and strand and this and under and over. So if you just watch exactly how I'm doing it, it's a lot easier to sort of give yourself the, a concept, I guess you could say. And you're just going to repeat this down the middle section. This is going to sort of macrame all 12 strands together super quickly and easily, but also look really beautiful and effective at the same time because sometimes macrame can be a little hard. So I wanted to create a knot or use a knot that was a little bit more on the easier side and another thing is, is that all these middle sec all the middle strands that you see here are gonna stay long they're gonna really stay at the four foot length because the right and the left strands are what we're using to macrame and that's what the length is gonna go to so if you keep these middle sections long you're gonna have four total pieces which are gonna end up being able to hold the shelf at the end so I then split it up um, into six strands on each side because I wanted to do a little bit of macrame on the left and the right side make sure to keep those middle strands that you had um, originally started to macrame over and make them the middle strands again on each the left and the right side because I want to keep those very long um, and then the right and the left strands that we had are going to get very short over time because they're the ones that sort of creating all the knots if that makes sense but we did a left and a right side this is going to be each the left and the right side of the actual shelf and then for some reason my freaking footage cut off but all I did at the end of these long strands was tie two knots as shown here and that's just where you're gonna slip your wood piece in. so you're gonna slip it in um, have the knots go on each the left and the right side and once you hang it on the wall and add some item it's gonna be perfectly able to hold any bits and bobs you have For this next project, we are using one of my favorite materials to work with, which is air dry clay. I absolutely love air dry clay. It's so easy to work with. It's so affordable. It's from the kids section. You don't have to bake it. It just dries in the air. Everything about it's great. So what I'm starting off by doing is creating these little cylinders and I didn't really know how to do it, but then I found this small roll of tape and I was like, I'm just going to push the clay on top of a piece of parchment paper inside of this little tape roll. And it makes the perfect little like one inch cylinders because I'm actually replicating this sort of clay uh, wall hanging that Urban Outfitter sells that's really expensive and I wanted to create it for a super affordable price and I think we're creating this for honestly like around five dollars total so super affordable and it looks really nice and handmade in the end so I'm creating I think about 12 of these circles I can't exactly remember how many I made but you can really alter it to whatever you want to do however many sections you want however many circles you want um, you can really alter it to your personal liking and then once I have all of those circles created and then once I have all of those circles created I wanted a large center focal point so I found this large 
large roll of masking tape and I'm creating a more larger scale circle in the center of the masking tape roll. And then I'm going to take my smaller little piece of tape and I'm going to sort of press inside of there to cut out a center opening, sort of similar to the one that Urban sells. I wanted to create this sort of like larger circular ring and that's exactly what I did here. And guys, don't worry if your clay looks like a little rough on the edges or anything because I think that adds to the whole handmade quality of it. And I also ended up cutting out um, another circle, but then cutting it in half to create these little half circles. And I used a tiny little paintbrush just to create holes um, on either the top of the half circles and then either side of the actual circles. And I think on the larger circle, I just created a hole on each side, the top and the bottom. After waiting 24 hours, you can go ahead and start painting them. As you can see, they dried down quite a bit, got a little lighter in color. And I'm going to be using some black paint to paint the left side. So that's what I'm doing now with a little bit of black paint. I'm painting all of these little coin medallions, I guess you could say, with the black paint. I did about two to three coats, I think, of the black just to make it really stark and nice. And then over on the right side, I actually created a more custom color. Um, I used a little bit of tan paint and I added a tiny bit of light pink because I wanted to give it almost like a light pink peach tan color, which is exactly what I was able to achieve. So I painted the whole right side with that more peachy tan nude shade. And then the middle section, I was going to leave just the raw clay, but then I kind of just felt like it was unfinished looking. So I ended up painting it with a little bit of white paint that I mixed with the tiniest dash of tan paint, just so it wasn't too optic white. It was like a little bit on the tannish side. And then what I did was use a little bit of water and black paint to create a more watery paint consistency. And I just splattered that on to the focal point because I thought that it added a nice sort of splatter painted effect. It just gives a lot more interest, makes it look speckled. And then after that, I grabbed a little bit of like baker's twine. And this is what I actually used to hang on the dowel that I got. And the dowels are from Michael's craft store. And I went ahead and just tied all three strands on the left, middle, and right sides, just with a nice knot so that I was knew that it was sturdy on there. And then what you have to do is just go through and just string on all your little medallions. And I strung them so it went up through the back side and then down through the front bottom portion of the medallion. It's pretty self-explanatory if you see what I'm doing here. It just creates sort of like almost a button look, like there's a button thread going through it. And then for the center point, I actually wanted to create a little tassel. So I just doubled up some yarn, tied it off in the center point as I'm showing here, and then also tied a tiny bit down from the top to create that tassel look. Just cut off all the excess strand pieces. And then when you're all completely done, you can hang it using a couple pieces of baker twine just to sort of attach it to the top and you are good to go with your new customized wall hanging. On to project number three. This one is super simple, but it's also really customizable and fun. So I'm starting off with a simple wood wall clock I found in the clearance section at Target. And I'm using a bit of this very thin quarter inch tape to sort of tape off three sections because this wall clock is actually just a color blocked wall clock. So it's super simple and easy. We're just gonna be painting it, but I love sort of like the very spring urban vibes it adds. It kind of gives you that pop art slash color blocked element, which I think is really fun. And it can definitely customize the space if you go for a certain color pattern or a certain color tone in a room, I guess you could say. Color scheme, that's the word I was looking for. Uh, you can go ahead and paint it whatever color scheme you're going for. So I went with a light dusty pink in the first section. Then I went in with a minty green. I kind of wish this was a little bit on the lighter side. It kind of turned out a little bit too mint. I wish it was kind of like a sagey muted gray white toned green, if you know what I'm talking about. And then I used a cream tone on the last section. So I just painted these all. I actually did three total coats of paint on all of these sections. Um, I didn't film all of them because it took me quite a while for them all to dry and then once it was completely done I waited until the next day to pull off these strands of tape and this is very key because you're wanting it to be extremely extremely dry prior to pulling off the tape so you get a very crisp edge because I tried to pull off the tape prior to it being very dry and the paint was actually peeling up so once you're completely done you have this really nice tri-color color blocked clock.
Okay, and the time has come. I'm saving the best project for last, guys. I'm starting off with these two metal rings I found at Joann's for just a couple dollars each. I think, honestly, like maybe $1.50 each. And I'm wrapping it with this natural jute cording that I also got at Joann's Fabrics. I've been using it for a while now. It's the same exact jute cording I used on my thrift flip video, if you remember, on that mirror. So I'm going around to these rings and just wrapping it completely around the rings because I really wanted to create a natural look as opposed to like these sort of yellow brassy looking rings. So that's what I did here. It took me quite a while to do this maybe like an hour or so but if you're watching a tv show or something you know it's like not a hard job it's just a little bit time consuming so i wrapped it around the first ring all the way around and then i'm going around the second ring and i'm doing this same exact thing wrapping that jute cording all the way around and i just used a hot glue gun to do this but if you want to be extra super secure you can probably use like e6000 or something but honestly hot glue works perfectly fine and i went all around the ring um and just added on this jute cording and i also got this tiny little almost like fish bowl s candle holder at joann's it was two dollars and i'm just covering this completely in the jute cord as well because this is going to actually be the plant holder um i was gonna get a terracotta pot originally but i thought it would be a little bit too heavy so i just ended up creating my very own with this really lightweight glass sort of fish bowl pot um, i'm sure you guys have all seen these before they sell them at the dollar tree as well but i went around with my jute cording and i glued this all the way around the pot just to create a new customized sort of little vase and then what i did was i glued the smaller ring on the inside of the larger ring and I used a lot of hot glue on this project because I really wanted it to stick and then I did the same thing I glued our little customized vase on the inside of the smaller ring and once those are dry just pipe in hot glue in all of the open areas to really make sure it's like cemented and secured in there this is a great time to actually add some e6000 sort of let it dry overnight and then I cut a small piece of jute cording that I'm going to use to hang up the hanging potter and there you are completely done with this asymmetrical planter And that, guys, was today's video. I hope that you enjoyed the projects. I hope that you'll recreate them or want to recreate them or are inspired to create something like them for your space. I think they're a little bit more on the spring side as well. I wanted to definitely include a lot more of a pastel color palette to some of the pieces and make them a bit more springy since we are going into the spring and summer season. I want to introduce like a little bit of color to my room, but not that much. Also included lots of natural elements like wood and macrame fiber and clay and just things like that that really give a nice sort of warm, homey, inviting feel feeling, which is what Urban Outfitters typically has to offer over on their site. And if you're not already, make sure to subscribe to my channel for your daily dose of DIY and also follow me over on Instagram at Lone Fox Home for more behind the scenes type stuff. Um, you can also go ahead and check out my personal Instagram if you would like. It's I'm Drew Scott. I post outfit pictures. I post outfit photos and just like photos of myself over there if you want to see more of me or daily dose of Drew. But I'm not going to keep you for much longer. The light is starting to come in and blind me. So I will catch you guys all in the next one. Have an amazing rest of your day and I'll see you next time. Bye guys.